So today we will read from Chaitanya Charitamrita. We will a uh, little go into the chapter eight, the talks between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy. <coughs> So, I will read, and if sometime I feel I should, I need to say something, I will say, but please do not hesitate to share whenever you feel to share something. Stop me and you, you share. When, whenever it comes in your heart. So, we will read just uh, the verses. From Chaitanya, Chaitamrita. <coughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is known as Gauranga, is the ocean of all conclusive knowledge in devotional service. He empowered Sri Ramananda Roy who may be likened to a cloud of devotional service. This cloud was filled with water of all the conclusive purports of devotional service and was empowered by the ocean to spread this water over the sea of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. Thus the ocean of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became filled with the jewels of the knowledge of pure devotional service. <coughs> all glories to Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda. All glories to Advaita Acharya. And all glories to all the devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. According to his previous program, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went forward on his tour and after some days arrived at the place of pilgrimage known as Jiyada Nisimha. <clears throat> Upon seeing the deity of Lord Nisimha in the temple, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered his respectful, respectful obeisances by falling flat. Then, in ecstatic love, he performed various dances, chanted and offered prayers. <coughs> he was telling, all glories to Nisim Hadev, all glories to Nisim Hadev, who is the Lord of Prahlad Maharaj and like a honeybee is always engaged in beholding the lotus-like face of the goddess of fortune. Although very fero ferocious, the lioness is very kind to her cubs. Similarly, although very ferocious to non-devotees like 
Hiranya Kashipu. Lord Nisimha is very, very soft and kind to devotees like Prahlad Maharaj. So like that he was praying in this way. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recited different verses from the Shastra too, in front of the Nisimhadev. <clears throat> the priest of Lord Nisimhadev then brought garlands and the remnants of the Lord's food and offered them to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. offered Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu an invitation. The Lord passed, passed the night in the temple and then commenced his tour again. Here is a nicely mentioning that, for example, Nisim Hadev, he so much loved his devotee Prahlad. And I believe all of us in our relationship with our Ishtadev, we can see and feel how much we are loved by our Ishtadev. That through many, many situations, through many events, we can feel that love. We can feel the guidance. I can only talk, of course, from my own experience and <clears throat> when I when I look back on my life and all the events, good or quote unquote bad ones, actually all those events, all those events were so much important. And we can understand through those events that we were guided and guided by love, by Radhika. Because if those events didn't happen, wouldn't happen, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be in this family. So, if somebody would ask me today, would you change something? No. No, yeah, some events were very painful. But I would not change them. Because that would take me in another direction. So, I believe that we can see love from our Ishtadev even through bad times, so quote unquote bad times. There is no good <coughs> and bad times. All, all is actually in a way good for us because my belief, my feeling is that we are always guided. That our Ishtadev always takes us by our hand and that we are guided to the right person, to our Gurudev. And through Gurudev we are guided Guru Dev holding our hand together with Radhika and actually guiding us step by step, each step closer to them, closer to our Ishtadev. And we should see our life as always guided. By our Ishtadev.
<clears throat> the next morning, in the great ecstasy of love, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started on his tour with no knowledge of the proper direction, and he continued the whole day and night. As uh, previously Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu converted to Vaishnavism, many people he met on the road, so he met many people on the road. After some days, the Lord reached the banks of the river Godavari. When he saw the river Godavari, the Lord remembered the river Yamuna. And when he saw the forest on the banks of the river, he remembered Sri Vrindavan Dham. Wow, this is so nice, you know, that Goranga showed us actually in a way that we can always remember Vrindavan, we can always remember Radhika through everything. I remember like uh, we're traveling with devotees from Zagreb to Belgrade and there is one part next to the highway with the forest and the fields there are many cows always and I remember that because we are so totally in car in ecstasy singing Radhe 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 Jai 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 Shri Radhe so we were singing and then on the right we saw that forest with the cows so beautiful and immediately what we remembered of course Vrindavan so and this our feelings grew immediately because of remembering we know what is the most important process? And that is Maranam. Remembering, thinking about Radha and Krishna or our Ishtadev, Radha Mohan, whoever uh, is, however is called your Ishtadev. And remembering. So sometimes. Is transport company, but it's called Varshan. And every time we travel on the highway, we see the trucks that have big letters Varshan. And there is also one tourist agency called Radhika. <laughs> so we see also those buses with, with the label Radhika. So this is always, this always, of course, rem uh, reminds us of Varshana and <laughs> rem reminds us of Radhika. So these are just like examples with the direct remembrance. But sometimes we can see some color. For example, we see, see the golden color and it reminds us of Radhika. Like, Four days ago, or three days ago, we were in Radakund. And after taking bath, we were sitting on the bank of the Radakund, and there uh, we saw all around us flying like those dragonflies. But not any dragonflies, but golden color dragonflies and this was of course who you will remember you know we were immediately remembering Radhika 
with her color so color smell when I go from my, in my town outside of Rindavan and then I smell some incense they would immediately remember Rindavan oh and just one more anecdote from my city my papa and me one day walked in the town and I heard from far, far away, I, we heard a flute, but like Mansuri flute, far, far away. And I said, wow, like Krishna's flute, you know? And where is Krishna? There is probably Radhika, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we went in that direction and then we saw one person who was playing Bansuri flute in the middle in the center in the center of the town totally dressed like some Indian sadhu and this was wow for us incredible and when we came to him I gave him some donation and when I put the money he like that so happily jumped and made a face that totally reminded me of my Giriraj. My, my Ishtadevers, Radhika and Krishna in my Giriraj. And half, like, I would say half confused, half, uh, how to say, impressed. And we're thinking, this is Giriraj making some play. Us, you know, so like that, we need to be open to see our Ishtadev everywhere, to remember, and like that, some small events, but they can bring up the feeling. Which we connect with our Ishtadev. Because we know 24 hours a day, that's our goal to be with our Ishtadev. 24 hours. So, in one way, in Sadaka Deha, this is also our practice that everything reminds us. So that's why devotees at home, in their homes, put the photos, they have the deities, they have, they, uh, how to say, they make all the environment in that way to always remind them of their mishtadev. Anybody have their own experience maybe? Uh, when you were reminded of your Ishta there. If you want to share. After performing his usual chanting and dancing for some time in this forest, the Lord crossed the river and took his bath on the other bank. After bathing in the river, the Lord walked a little distance from the bathing place and engaged in chanting the holy name of Krishna. 
At that time, accompanied by the sounds of, of music, Ramananda Roy came there on a palanquin to take his bath. Many Brahmanas, following the Vedic principles, accompanied Ramananda Roy. According to the Vedic rituals, Ramananda Roy took his bath and offer oblations to his forefathers. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could understand that the person who had come to bath in the river was Ramananda Roy. The Lord wanted so much to meet him, that his mind immediately began running after him. Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was running after him mentally, he patiently remained sitting. Ramananda Roy Seeing the wonderful sannyasi, then came to see him. Sometime in life, it is interesting that when we so strongly think about, even if we are not going to that person, so often happens that this person calls us or we meet this person. <laughs> and Goranga here was running after him mentally <laughs> so much he was so much he wanted to meet him that he was already thinking about this meeting he was already meeting him in his mind and <clears throat> Ramananda Roy saw him and was attracted and wanted to come Srila Ramananda Roy then saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be as brilliant as a hundred suns. The Lord was covered by a saffron garment. He was large in body and very strongly built. And his eyes were like lotus petals. When Amananda Roy saw the wonderful sannyasi, he was struck with wonder. He went to him and immediately offered his respectful obeisances, falling down flat like a rod, like a stick, rod, rod. The Lord stood up and asked Ramananda Roy to arise and chant the holy name of Krishna. Indeed, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very eager to embrace him. Ah, this this always melts my heart, you know. This embrace. How Goranga and Nityananda, how they were sharing this love by embracing everyone. No, please don't share. Um, <coughs> I don't remember what it's written about also. I don't remember. <laughs> no, no, it's like this, okay. Uh, it, it's like this, it must be like this. Yeah. Um, I don't remember where I read it, this shloka, it's written, it's perfection for the eyes to see Vaishnava. Perfection 
to the body to touch Vaishnava. And I remember uh, one devotee, I, I think many of you know him, his name is Bhagavad Amrita. Uh, I met him one year ago here. And then he embraced me. Um, you know, if you eating something after some test, after some test coming, mm -hmm. after his embracement, I feel test. My heart become more melted and Harikatha causing more emotions. So for her is I, I eager to receive such embracement. <laughs> it's like he is embracing by his bowels. Oh, Bhagavata Amrita from Yeruti, from South America, I think. Shabrada is from South America. Bhagavata Amrita. I, I know some other Bhagavata Amrita from Macedonia, I don't know um. this for Okay. Anyway, anyway, uh, but, uh, it's an interesting story. Uh, for, for one more example about embarrassment from Mahaprabhu. This is what um, Maharaj Prataparudra received. Mm -hmm. He was so eager to receive personal darshan from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Ramadarai was his um, Shiksha Guru for us. He taught him what to do, and he arranged so many things for, to make this happen, make this possible. Then Mahaprabhu was took rest in a garden, Jagadhapatika it's called, this garden in Jagadhapuri, in the middle of Radhayatra. Mm -hmm. He was completely immersed in Radha Bhavas in this moment. But the Paruda was dressed in simple clothes, like simple person, not like king. And he was taught by um, Pradhapurta Maharaj uh, Gopi Gita. Mm -hmm. uh, and because Mahavaramandara knows the mood of Mahaprabhu, and he taught him, Maharaj Pradhapurta, what, what to pronounce, how to make please, mm -hmm. how to support the mood of Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu was so grateful. He told Buridajana, Buridajana is end of night shock of Buridajana, means mm -hmm. magnanimous, so magnanimous. You gave me so much. And he stood up and embraced. I think, I, I'm thinking from that time when I heard this, like, how, how much mercy Maharaj Pratapurta received in this moment. What kind of power he received in this moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. And <laughs> uh, one more. How could they embrace me? It's very important for the cycle. Because uh, when he is, uh, returned from hospital, I remember he was, he had a strong cough. And then he returned from hospital, uh, so many devotees come to meet him at the gate. And the first person was Jaranda Maharaji. I was not so clever how to do it, but you to feel see me. I stood side and he just walked away. And I was so unhappy. And then I understood, yeah, because he is looking forward, who is just in front of him. Mm -hmm. And then he came to outer room. Mm -hmm. I just sit down at his photo street. And he saw me and then he embraced me. And I thought, okay, now I understand, he loves me, <laughs> okay, good. And I want to live with him, but he not alone, he more tightly embraced. And as, only after this, my heart told, yes, now I'm sure he loves me. <laughs> it's very, for the so important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because embrace brings closeness that we feel like a family. We are all hugging here because this brings us close. This family, the family hugs. You know? And when Guru the first time hugged me, I said this story many times already because at that time I was uh, on the edge to leave everything. And when he hugged me, I melted. Because this was, for me, like confirmation 
Oh, you belong to this family. I was totally surprised. Now this became normal because this is the way. Because I immediately remembered at that moment of Nityananda and Gauranga, how they did, how they shared love, how they showed to others that they are important and that they didn't care from which background they are coming. Yeah, they had problems, let's say problems, that somebody was angry at them, why they were hugging Shudras, or even lower than Shudras, and they would say, who is Shudra? Who is Chandala? Uh, you know? Who is that? Oh, they said Haribo. They are already about that, all that. You know? They didn't care. And this is also one great point, which we repeat many times, but I always think it's, it's important that we understand that Radhika doesn't count our faults. We are learning. We are learning to love. We are learning to be Manjaris. How to do that? And we can always know the small child. Parent wouldn't be angry if child is learning to walk and fails. What parent would do? Encourage. Encourage. Come on. I'll help you. I'll hold your hands. Let's walk together until you learn. Then you can walk alone. And the mentality of child is child falls and then child says, oh, I will never walk and then I don't want to try anymore. Is that true? No. No, of course not. <laughs> yeah. The child, what child does? Stands up, tries to stand up, and maybe stands up and try again. Falls, yes. But then what child do? Stand up and do again. And parent takes care, helps. Sometimes it leaves to try alone, of course, because if always holding hands, uh, then child will learn just like that to walk. But hands in the beginning are important. That's why Guru Dev, holding our hand towards Radhika, guiding us, navigating us. That one day we can walk on our own two feet, Manjari feet. That's the point. And the beginning is this embrace that is important. That we feel that we are this family. Like, you know, how much is important when the child is born to get that first embrace from his mother? This is so much important. This was scientifically proven. That first connection between a child and the mother is so much important. So in that way, our connection grows through like that contact. So we saw that Nityananda and Goranga, they both embraced people around. And in many stories, uh, you can see that those even who were not maybe in direct physical contact, but they felt embraced by them, by their presence. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then inquired whether he was Ramananda Roy. 
and he replied, Yes, I am your very low, low servant, and I belong to the Shudra community. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then embraced Sri Ramananda Roy very firmly, strongly. You are mine, like that, he embraced him so strongly. Indeed, both the master and the servant almost lost consciousness due to ecstatic love. Wow. This, this is also, in one way, our life with our Ishtadev. We want to embrace our Ishtadev. But my belief is that our Ishtadev also wants to embrace us. Because their love is so much bigger than our love towards them. So much. And when this embrace truly happens, I believe we will all feel to be, become unconscious <laughs> from this strong emotions. I, I have I have interesting experience that um, happened with me in 2001 we organized a festival for Shona Anderson Raj uh, close to Moscow and I was Pujani and in uh, my you know, moment I need to take Shiradan Haridin's Chandor Hari to the outer room. And I did it like this. First time in my life I embraced him. It was not a uh, consciousness thing. It just happened because I need to brought them to the outer room. And I feel so much bliss in this moment. So much bliss. It was for me very interesting experience. So it's, uh, yeah. When we feel in our heart this, you know, somebody can embrace them and not feel nothing. You know? But the point is our feelings when we go with with feelings into this, then our feelings are multiplied through their feelings and we can feel so much love coming from them I want to continue this story yeah. so, I just remember the continuation of this story I think I was so happy because today was happy I did it, I did it because of the service but at the end of the festival I remember how much happiness I experienced. I tried to again do this due to my happiness. It's not happened. <laughs> I mean, do it is not happened. Yeah. Because it's other mood, other motivation. <laughs> yeah, this this is a good point. Because I know I love Radakun so much. And every time, first time when I come to Radakun. I break and I, I can just come to the edge, just start to see Radha Kund and I'm finished. I'm crying, I'm, I'm finished. But the next day I come, it's not like that. Why? This is uh, one point in connection connected with this, uh, like we Lamba, I will say, you know. When we are together and we are when we are separated. Like I wasn't here for five years. I mean I see the photos of Radha Kund and I remember Radha Kund. But when I come directly to Radha Kund, it's a totally different story. And but but the point is 
now I'm here. So I'm not anymore separated and I am happy, but it's not the power of the meeting. Like Radha and Krishna, separation helps to even grow, to grow the feelings even more. So when they meet, this is explosion of emotions. Also, we can feel that in even mundane, this worldly uh, emotions. But in their case, it's separation. And then manjaris are working to help them again connect. But the separation is also important to grow the feelings. Because if we are in the same energy, <coughs> sometimes we can get a habit. And in my case, how I felt it, we take some things for granted. Like when two, two, two persons are in a relationship and they live together, they can take each other for granted. And in that moment, sometime, maybe they will not put an effort in the relationship. But when they are sometime apart, then they start to miss each other. And they are awaiting the meeting. And when the meeting comes, their emotions grow even more and they will put an effort more to connect even better somewhere you know that with Radha and Krishna like their love it is said that their love is always fresh and new like first meeting like first meeting every time, but always better and better, always new. And somewhere I heard, like in this world relationship, partners, friends, family, wherever you have the relationship with, if you always act as you acted in the beginning of the relationship, there will be no end. Meaning, especially in couples, in the beginning of relationship, like, for example, that's will be, like, wife says to husband, oh, please, can you take out the trash? And the husband, oh, yes, happily taking out the trash, yeah, taking out the trash. trash. After 10 years, can you please take out the trash? What? I'm not your janitor. You take out the trash, yeah? you know. But the point is that <laughs> if we have the feelings and grow the feelings, we felt in that moment, for example, in a relationship in this world, we there will be no end of like that relationship. So in, it's naturally to see that with Radha and Krishna, it is always fresh. And in this, you know, Vikram Lamba, they're, yeah, they are quote unquote suffering in, rela in uh, separation. But this suffering, so called suffering, it's there, important to grow this feeling. We know that Goranga Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy know each other from before, you know, from previous incarnations. But now when they meet, Goranga was anxious to hug Ramananda Roy. You know? So when he finally hugged him, his emotions burst. Not just his, Ramananda Roy's, 
and brothers, both. And they almost fall unconscious together. Wow. So, we, so why? Why this happened? It says next. Their natural love for each other was awakened in them both. Natural love. Shema and the Sai Maharaj comment in this verse, he told, Why natural love? Because who is Mahaprabhu? Radha. Because Radha moves, dominating. Even Krishna. But who is Ramandra? The Shaka. They eat only together. They eat only together. It's natural love. So Radha is Ishaka is very close because she was born in the same day. That means she has the same nature. What is why now Mahabharu came to Ramandarai? Why? Because he has so much feelings. But he needs someone who will help him. I'm just repeating Harikatha. I don't know too much. He told He needs someone who will help him to do these things. So they embraced and fell to the ground. When they embraced each other, ecstatic, ecstatic symptoms, paralysis, perspira perspiration, Tears, shivering, paleness, and standing up of the bodily hairs appear. You just you can just imagine how this looks. Like. <laughs> yeah, they are <laughs> like they hug each other and all the symptoms at the same time coming. The word Krishna came from their mouths falteringly. It's difficult. No? It's like, because they couldn't say it. Uh, difficult to difficult pronounce. To pronounce yeah, because, yeah. It's shocked. Shocked. Yeah, yeah. Shocked. Why? Because both. They have love for Krishna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both <laughs> love. When the stereotyped ritualistic brahmanas who were following the Vedic principles saw this ecstatic manifestation of love, they were stru struck with wonder. All these brahmanas began to reflect as follows. The Brahmanas thought, we can see that this sannyasi has a luster like the effulgence of Brahman. But how is he crying upon embracing a Shudra, a member of the fourth caste, caste in this social order? They thought, this Ramananda Roy is the governor of Madras, a highly learned and grave person, a Mahapandita. But upon touching this sannyasi, he has become restless like a madman. Um. Is it good to make a little, a little bit to explain who is Kayastha? Kayastha? It's, um, Ramadarai, he belongs to Kayastha. Um, how do you say? Uh, Brahmanas. Okay, okay, caste. Caste, yeah, Kayastha yes. caste. Mm -hmm. Kayastha caste, uh, it builds from them, uh, then, not Brahman and Brahman, Brahmin. Then, uh, Brahman and, uh, for example, from 
Kshatriya family living. Then it's appearing in Kayasa. And because it's going beyond of custom, other um, societal Brahmanas, they give like punishment. They're not accepting a high position with Brahmana, and they tell him, now you're Shudra, you behave like Shudra. But it's not he really nice educated, nice behavior, his behavior very nice. He has position of a ruler, it's Kshatriya, and he has education as a Brahmana. It's not Shudra, he's not Shudra. His, uh, his behavior and his knowledge, it's not Shudra. It's not Shudra. Yes, she, Actually, right. I'm not telling him, he's Vaishnava, of course, and more over. Of course. While the Brahmanas were thinking in this way about the activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw those outsiders and restrained his transcendental emotions. This is, my, in my experience, uh, that our emotions can be a lot stronger when we are alone with our Ishtadev. Mm -hmm. When we are alone with our Ishtadev, yes. our emotions can be much stronger. That's inspiration. Hmm? Inspiration. The meaning, like, my, my experience when I'm alone, and there are no other person, alone means me and my ah, Ishtadev. That means, ah, yeah, so okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. Alone meaning me and my Ishtadev, uh, or thinking about my Ishtadev, but when I'm not surrounded by other people, uh, I feel that my emotions are more easily, how to say, manifested than when there are other people around. It's not always the case. Uh, this depends who are other people around us. In this case, we can see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Goranga saw these outsiders who were thinking from their point of view, ritualistic point of view, you know, and and caste point of view. But when we are surrounded with like-minded devotees, then emotions can grow more. But, but with my experience was that the strongest emotions I had when I was alone. This is my experience. But this usually means that we can maybe relax more. You know, like we can allow the emotions more easily when we are alone. So that's why bhajan, our personal bhajan, it's always good to be alone. You know, we, are, we also know that all the Goswamis and today Babaji's who are present, they all have their own bhajan kutir. Bhajan Kutir is a place where they did their bhajan. And there are stories uh, of some who are in, even doing some, let's say, crazy things just to escape from people. Everybody knows about Gorki Das Babaj. He was doing chanting in toilet. And when they asked him, why? Because everybody was disturbing him. Yeah. Sometimes, some devotees can outsidely act irrational, crazy. But this is a disguise. Just that others will not disturb him. 
Some will escape into caves. We know so many stories. And some went for many years into caves just to have their peace. So that's why it's good to have, for example, at home, it's good to have one place for your bhajan. And it's good that this is maybe the same place. Why? Because in that place, and uh, you create the atmosphere in which you can easily enter into your bhajan. It can be your maybe part where is your deities, if you have the deities, or you have some photos there which remind you and you can easily dive in into your meditation, into your bhajan. But one place, because there is also the energy of the place. For example, we know bedroom is for sleeping. And all psychologists will say that the bedroom should be only for sleeping. If you are using the bedroom that you do work from there or some other activities, then in that room will not be just one energy which is for sleeping. That's why it's good that that room is for one purpose. Or, or if it's the apartment that it's connected everything, then this part of the room that is for this activity. So that you have your part, your bhajan kutir, your bhajan place. When you sit there, you immediately enter into that energy. So this is good. This is good practice to have like that place. And this naturally comes because when you <laughs> energy is in the air, and many times you also have probably felt it that you come to some part of the house or some place and you start remembering some song suddenly or something you think about something but you are asking from where this came this thought but the point is that other person was maybe standing just a few minutes before here and was thinking about that left the emotion in the air like today morning I was standing here in the room next to the bathroom I started to think about one event from yesterday from Radakun and in details I was thinking how this was mercy and many things and I just went uh, started to talk to Mahabhava about this what I'm thinking and I just started and she said I was just standing there and was thinking that 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 and that I didn't say all what I was thinking but she said same things what I was thinking this didn't happen all this was something happened but my thinking process was that I was thinking about what this means and she was thinking the same just a few minutes before on the same place standing so this is just one example but the point here is your bhajan kutir your place where you sit and you are there in energy of bhajan when you have your place of work you sit there and you are easily going to the work for example, behind the computer or whatever you do in your life. That your energy is there, connected with the activity that you do there. So try this. Try to designate one place where you come, sit, and you enter into Vajan. And try to use the same place. And you will see how 
in one place the energy will grow well, what's the time please I think 20 to 6 okay still have time uh, one more anecdote in Iskon farm in Hungary uh, they totally recreated Vrindavan there. I mean, totally, I mean, they have all the places and names and Radha Kunt, Shama Kunt. Yeah, they have, they have everything made, made there. Uh, and there was one devotee, her name was Radha Kunt. Her name was Radha Kunt. And she was a nice, really nice devotee. Uh, and uh, in what context? Uh -huh, yeah, I know. Uh, so we never knew. I never knew her. Mahabhava one time met her, but she was uh, after some time sick and left her body. And uh, when we arrived there, and we came to her house, mm -hmm. and we sat on the side of the house a room where she was living and doing her bhajan and where she left the body also what a strong energy was there we you could feel it so much and then we asked wow what is this energy here and then they told us what was this place like we could feel that this play, place was like a portal to the spiritual world, like that was feeling strongly, so much, this place. And the two devotees that time, when she left, before she left body, were both sick, both had cancer. And uh, the story is that uh, they talked and said, who first goes? will appear to the other person or somehow show her the sign how it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she left. She, he got better, but she didn't and she left her body. And after some months, he was dreaming that somebody was knocking on his door and he opened the door and there was a small girl in front of the, his door. And he was asking, well, who are you? And she said, oh, oh, you don't remember me. Oh, okay, wait, wait. She changed into that Radakon. Oh, it's you. And he asked her, oh, can you tell me how it was? And she said, Oh, I was just carried. She was just taken and carried. Mm -hmm. And now she's a small girl. Can we wonder? <laughs> no? Small and beautiful girl like Manjari. But she said, Oh, I was just. And this is just one of the stories, but, but the many, many, there are many, many examples and that also gives us, you know, how Rishta that wants to hug us, wants us, and we want our Rishta that. So there is no problem. We just continue to come closer and closer, and as we come in closer, our feelings of wanting that hug, they grow. And when this finally happens, we are there. We are home. It sounds for me like uh, steps for um, not. Uh, Thank you.
and our timing presentation on the own nature. Uh, and then also, uh, you can call this purity because nothing can uh, other, no other dogs, no other natures. It's but in this case, it's, uh, it's tied in a current function, in particular, what we're doing. In this place, I'm clicking, in this place, I'm clicking to a sudden, in this place, I'm clicking, in this place, I'm clicking to a sudden. And every day it's growing. This place, every day it's high, growing. And same, same thing also to say about time. This time I'm doing this, this time I'm doing this, every day. And then the same coming, so the desire can use that to do this again. Mm. Because of the impression, impression working according to time and what the English circumstances. I don't know what the circumstances. Impression is a ruling in the behavior. behavior. I, I could not calculate always when my intelligence how to behave in this case or other ways. But inflation, inflation, do this unconsciously. If it is always in this one time I'm doing something, and then this time coming, I gave this. Initially, I want to do this. So when they regain their sanity, they both, both sat down. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smiled and began to speak as follows. Sarabhama Bhattacharya spoke of your good qualities. And he made a great endeavor to convince me to meet him. Like he was. Yeah, maybe he was acting that oh, you need to try better to convince me, but he wanted to meet, <laughs> as we understand from the previous part. He wanted to meet with uh, Ramananda Ray. Indeed, I have come here just to meet you. It is very good that even without making, making an effort, I have gotten your interview here. Ramananda Roy replied, Sarabhama Bhattacharya thinks of me as his servant. Even in my absence, he is very careful to do me good. Yeah? You see here. He thinks of him as his servant, but he's thinking of his wellness to do good to him. By his mercy, I have received your interview here. Consequently, I consider that today I have become a successful human being. I can see that you have best bestowed special mercy upon Sarabhama Bhattacharya. Therefore, you have touched me, although I am untouchable. This is due only to his love for you. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Narayan himself, and I am only a government servant interested in materialistic. I am the lowest among men of the fourth caste. You do not fear the Vedic injunctions stating that you should not associate with a shooter. You were not contemptuous of my touch. Although in the Vedas, 
you are forbidden to associate with Shudras, meaning because he is from a Brahmana and you shouldn't associate with Shudras. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. Therefore, no one can understand your purpose. By your mercy, you are touching me, although this is not sanctioned by the Vedas. This is so much how we can understand. I mean, she is above Vedas. Goranga is above Vedas. And the point is, in this case, Vedas are talking about the material body. They are all born in different families and so they belong to some, to some different caste. But Goranga saw them who they are and accepted everybody. He saw on that level. That's why Nityananda, when they I would say, when he hugged some and Brahmanas would be angry, oh, why are you hugging a Shudra? You're a Brahmana. Nityananda would say, who is Shudra? Who is Brahmana? Where do you see those? You know? Where do you see those? And he would hug them again. <laughs> sure. Because love, love doesn't see that distinction. Love doesn't see that distinction. Like, we are here in one family from all around the world. Even some countries are in war. But here we are a family. We don't have that distinctions. There are no distinctions here. Political, national, uh, relig religious, of course, because we are in the same like, belief and we are going in the same way. But here also are accepted people of different rasas. It's not just that we have in family those who are just in Manjari rasa. We have our Hanuman, who is Rambhakta, but he's totally accepted. He's part of the family. We have the devotees who are in Vatsalya rasa. And Guru Dev said, they are our elders. They need to take care of us. We are children, small Manjaris. <laughs> so <laughs> they need to take care of us. Yeah. But everybody is accepted. So like that. From different villages, I saw one couple Christians came to him. I remember one couple of Christians came to here, they stayed here one month. But they were getting so much mistakes, so much love, and then they asked about research. But you have got not his life. That's it. But they was Christian, and you were to with them about Jesus. About Mary course. Magdalena, about his uh, help us, before about um, how he saw um, what is the relationship with his father and what it is really about like this. Of course, because he can see this. This is also love. Jesus was teaching love. So, but in this case, uh, we can see that Goranga didn't see this, and in that, that way he was going, let's say, against the Vedas. We can say it above the Vedas. Because he was seen from different eyes. And Ramananda Roy understood this, and he said, next, he's saying, you have come here specifically to deliver me. You are so merciful that you alone can deliver all fallen souls. It is the general practice of all saintly people to deliver the fallen. 
Therefore, they go to people's houses, although they have no personal business there. My dear Lord, sometimes great saintly persons go to the homes of householders, although these householders are generally low-minded. When a saintly person visits their homes, one can understand that it is for no other purpose than to benefit the householders. Along with me, there are about a thousand men, including the Brahmins, and all of them appear to have had, had their hearts melted simply by seeing you. Doranga's effulgence was melting everyone around. His love was not, he couldn't contain that love inside because his love is so strong. His love is radica. Yeah. So he couldn't hold it inside. So it was spreading in all directions. I hear everyone chanting the holy names of Krishna. Everyone's body is thrilled with ecstasy. And there are tears in everyone's eyes. Wow. When we feel the love of our Ishta Dev, mm -hmm. this Goranga, they felt the love, they felt connection, and their bodies, they can't control their bodies in that moment. They start shaking, and the eyes cry. A tears of love. Love becomes like liquid love falling from the eyes. That's that feeling. You want to feel in connection with other things. Feel the feeling outside and inside, and finally to see them in our vajan, to be with them, to embrace them, and that they embrace us. I love when Purde was explaining the Maha Mantra, how the first part of the Maha Mantra. We are watching them, and they are embracing together. Radha and Krishna, Radha Mohan, they are embracing. So Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Radha and we are watching. Radha and Krishna embracing. But in the second part, they are also embracing us. And this was for me, wow. When I first started, like in 2015, or even before, I heard from Guru this explanation like that. I remember that from that time, when Guru was talking, every lecture we were crying because we never listened like this. You know, listening to philosophy, Veda, Vedas have so much philosophy. There are so many Shastras. We could spend lives just reading, without understanding, just a period of deniency. And that's why Guru Dev saying, just two Shastras, I mean, Vilapa Kusumanjali and Radha Rasa Sudhani. 
when we understand those, when we go deep into those, we will understand all these other shastras. Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. We will understand. But first, we need to go deep. Vilapa Kusumanjus, Radharas, to feel. And I heard, and I was in Radhakund three days ago, that when we read Vilapa Kusumanjus, that first we should feel the cry of Radhakund. Yeah? We should feel his cry. We should feel his cry and then read the text. Because he was crying. He was crying in separation because he was in his meditation serving them. He was there feeling the emotions. And then when the vision was stopped, vision was stopped, he could feel so much separation. And that's that. To feel the separation, there must be a meeting. Without a meeting, it's difficult to have the feelings of separation. So, in a way, devoting, he's getting the glimpses, getting some feelings of connection when they are in Sadak there. And these feelings are growing through time and the devotee starts to feel more and more separation and wants to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then we come to, to get to, to have revealed Saradeh, uh, Siddhadeh. And then again grow, go slowly deeper and deeper and deeper into these feelings and vajan. And Everybody would love this to happen immediately. But it takes time because we were not learned material life in one day. And material programs, material thinking. So it, it takes time to remove those barriers to melt with love, those barriers that we can go deeper and deeper into our body. And this is something what I feel I learned during my visit this time to Vrindavan. I feel I came here, oh, I want to see you Radhika now, here. In some way. I don't know how. You know how. But what I got through this stay here, maybe I'm still one week, I don't know what will happen. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but until now, I got this feeling that we need to be also patient, but in other <laughs> way, you know, they say also we should forget the patience. You know, but, but patience in a way that we believe in the process and that we every day go into our bhajan, see that we always have the place, even when we are not sitting in meditation, that we always have the place in our minds, in our hearts, where our Ishtadev can dance. If we are, if we, if we have our mind occupied by other things, there is no place for them to dance. 
So let's leave a place for them where they can always dance in our minds. Especially when we go into bhajan and we sit and we relax into bhajan. Let's allow them that they can manifest. Allow them. There is no force, no forcing. Allow them to manifest in your hearts and in your mind. Thank you. Bad Good morning. Hmm? You remind me of once I heard how one sadhu from Babaji on the bench under the Kunda crying in separation from Mother and that moment. It's so pitiful and it's melting heart. And because in this cry so much Radha is present and he may have immediately wants to run to it, to, towards this person mm-hmm. and from him. But in that moment I couldn't want, I was in Parikraman. Yes, it was. But it was so touching heart. Mm-hmm. Something amazing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, this is for today. If you want, if somebody wants to share something, please do. If not, that's it for today. Just go into your bhajan. And remember that have your place of bhajan in your house. Try this. This is good practice. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, Buddha does embrace. It's always special. And what I learned that uh, sometimes embrace is enough. No words needed. All becomes clear. <laughs> When you describe this, um, mm-hmm. and, uh, mm-hmm. oh, when you describe the energy, when you went to the, it's, I don't know where the song, uh, yes. that's the body, and like it's this like similar energy, like in the whole of that small. <laughs> So strong. Well, sometimes, sometimes there are sometimes places like that. You know, it's not always depending. You know, because uh, what I noticed that many people are coming to go to there, and. I mean, that's, uh, they are sharing everything. Meaning, uh, they are sharing some things which are not in the mood, I would say. And sometimes this energy also stays there. So it's, it can be mixed. But when the sharing there goes fully in Manjari sharing, then you can feel it. Then the, the flow goes naturally so much, so much. So, it also depends on. Well, you get it wrong, but I think it depends on what God is doing now. One thing is he's absorbed. Other thing, when he is discussing something with us, some even problems, it's maybe not spiritual. Yes, it's helping, but in a way it's here. I remember when it was recently, 
gerade vor dem Markt hatten. Da ist City Square, Spock, Singing, in Alter Room, and I feel so much. He's like generator. So much energy can come. <coughs> Hard to detect him. So much energy can be here. He's energizing everything. <coughs> Everyone. Yes. Right, right. So see you next time.